Hello, everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. I am joined by Johnny Maloney and Austin Yorsky. Uh, fellows, how are we feeling this week? I bet I could take Bon Jovi in a fight. I looked at him earlier, and I was like, this fucking guy, he thinks he's so tough, he can punch a horse. I'll take his gangly ass out, and I'll just I'll whoop him up. I don't give a fuck. That's how Isn't I'm feeling. is Bon Jovi in, like, his 60s now? Yeah, like Bon Jovi in the 80s or Bon Jovi right now. Like, because, Austin, what second. I just heard was I could kick an old man's <laughs> ass and not feel not feel even remotely bad about it. Both of them. I'll, I'll, I'll tag team them. I'll take old Jovi and new Jovi or young Jovi. I don't know how they go. I don't know what their fucking wrestling names will be. It goes, but... it goes, it goes old Jovi, middle-aged Jovi, mm-hmm. renaissance Jovi, <laughs> industrial Jovi, Information age Jovi. Uh, I, th- I thought it was going to be old Jovi and uh, Jovi Classic, and then Jovi Zero, the one with the zero calories. I think he. I think he tried to do Jovi Classic, and it just didn't. You know, the market. The market wasn't right for it. I'm just saying, all his songs not are enough, like not enough T-shirts on the ground that were like tied up in bunches just above the belly button. You know. I'm just saying, all his songs are like, I have a gun, and I'll kick a horse in the dick. And I'm just like, bitch, I have, I am twice your size, motherfucker. What are you talking about? Okay, first of all, it is weird that you're getting defensive about a song that some guy, he doesn't even know you, for one thing. Let's be clear about that. And second, like, his only songs about horse dicks are, like, from when he was, like, in that movie, Young Guns 2, I think. That was a good movie, though. I, I haven't seen it, but I'm, I'm, I believe it was about that. He wasn't, like, writing cowboy p- horse dick songs, like, before that. A little bit. And I assume not A little after bit. That. The, would... real, the real question here, Austin, is, mm-hmm. is do you think you could take R2-D2, We Wish You a Merry Christmas, Bon Jovi? What in the fuck did that sentence mean, homie? Okay, so <laughs> not many, not just many people shit. know this, Okay. <laughs> But right. the, the Bon Jovi's very first recording was on the Star Wars Christmas album called Christmas in the Stars, uh, released in 1980 by, by Miko, I think his name was pronounced. He was, he was a record producer for, like, like, he used to fucking redo, like, all these movie themes and shit like that, right? Like, he did a disco version of, like... Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and then, like, there was a Star Wars disco remix that he did and shit like that. He did... I remember that. He did an album. He did a Christmas album in 1980, which has John Bon Jovi's first recording, his first professional recording, and he performs a song called R2-D2, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And I like it has lyrics in it like I shit you not and if the snow becomes too deep just give a little beep <laughs> We'll bring you by the fire so you can warm your wires Okay now here's here's the thing did John Bon Jovi write this song or was he more like a hired gun like was, was he really into Star Wars and he was like this is my moment. Was he a young gun, in other words? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know if he wrote it, but I do know that he okay. is credited as John Bon Jovi on the album Christmas in the Stars. The Star Wars. Are we sure it's the same John Bon Jovi? It is the same John Bon Jovi. I shit you not. Okay. I learned this I learned this many years ago. I learned this when I was in high school because of like this really weird radio show that I used to listen to on Canadian the Canadian broadcast. Pardon me. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, Brave New Waves, found a copy of it. And like mm. this one Christmas season, they just they couldn't stop playing it. But you can see it on the shame. internet now. Well, yeah, I mean everything is. Um This is neat. This this uh this took a turn. R two D two we wish you a Merry Christmas. It's really your fault, Leon. You asked R2, us how we D2, were. We, we love answered, you. Honestly. It's true. No, okay, first of all, I asked you how you were. You 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 didn't first of all, you didn't even answer that. Yes you just I said, did. Yeah, you way. just like you, you just said I you whipped out the exacto knife blade and just leapt right to John Bon Jovi's throat. That's so, how I was feeling. You didn't, 
<laughs> uh, you were feeling hostile towards John Bon Jovi? I'm just look at him. I'm just saying he's a very talented man, and apparently he was appointed to some government position by Barack Obama, which I found interesting. I'm reading his Wikipedia page now, but he he sure. just presented himself. His persona was like a cool, like strong cowboy man who was like good at like fights and stuff. And I'm just saying, I think I could break his neck with my bare hands, and it wouldn't be big of an issue. I bet it would be for him. <laughs> well, yeah, but um, it's just hypothetical. Also involves time travel because I, re- I really, it does. I don't really care about the old guy. Also, he's very rich, and I think that just inures me to any kind of criticism in general. So okay. Also, we are doing a show now. Yeah, I mean, I guess um, that's what you want to call. I, have a, I mean, I have things I could say, but like, I, I was wondering how much we could get out of this. I feel like six minutes was it. My feelings that are not it. your content, Leon. I feel like they exactly are, Leon. Like, there's a one to one ratio. My feelings are okay. Good. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I expected. I mean, that's that's how it has been for like 180 episodes of this, and then many episodes prior of other things. Mm. Um, Okay, so uh, I I uh, I found the worst app this week. Um, that seems like it. That's quite a like. Wow, that's quite a claim. Oh, Did you have to look hard, or was it just like no, right no. there? It was presented to me, um, not not given to me. Like here, you would like this, but like I learned of it. Um, it is almost certainly exclusively for insecure straight guys. It is called make app and it is an app that takes a picture of a woman and removes her makeup because some men are afraid that that what women will look like without their makeup so they need to check before they start dating them i saw that and my i have a million thoughts about the about this and it's a lot of them are super obvious but like some of the more obscure thoughts i want to start off with are who is getting so, so, so much romantic attention that they really need to buckle down into the hardcore math to get, like, a spreadsheet and really start <laughs> getting into the nitty-gritty, like, details of people's fucking pores? Like, is it is yeah. this Brad Pitt behind this? No. I, it is almost certainly uh, guys... <laughs> it is, it, it's creepy guys, basically. That's what I'm saying. Um, I feel like they should be just thankful and i'm not trying to be like hurtful with the stereotypes of like lonely young men or thing but i'm saying i feel like they should just be like pretty yeah. chill and like thankful if they get so much as like a high five my favorite article about this is from pop sugar and the headline is you can use an app to see women without makeup or you can just get a fucking life <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like pretty good i don't even know what this publication is but you got me there Yeah, you just treat um, people like humans and then if they trust you then you'll know more about them and it's fine and pretty cool yeah. So, I don't know, I've talked about makeup it's, before because I was uh, dating a makeup artist for a while, and I was mm-hmm. of the opinion, like my personal preferences, I'm just not crazy about makeup. And I talked about it on the show how, like, she told me basically, it's not about you, it's not for you. I enjoy doing this. Right. This is this is my art, basically. And so, yeah. deal with it, fuck boy. <laughs> and that's <laughs> and, like I think that's important. I needed to hear that, and so I, I share it as often as I can. Um, yeah. just, yeah, it's perfectly fine if you have your own preferences. I certainly do, but it's not about you. That's, I want to get a shirt that just says it's not about you. And then when people start talking in real life, I'm mostly just going to spend my time pointing at it. <laughs> well, the thing is, if you wear a t-shirt like that, they are going to assume it is about them. They're going <laughs> to ask about the t-shirt. It sort, of, it sort of becomes about them, actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. As soon as they ask about the t-shirt, it is going to be about them. Damn, okay, so that's not going to work. I, mean, I think of a different way. I just feel like 99% <laughs> of the things I read or, like, see uh, in my feed, on the internet, on the news, it's just, like, I just want to scream at the people talking. Like, it's not a value! <laughs> <sighs> oh, my. Is that... Okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm going like, swirling down my own rabbit hole here. And sp- speaking of my rabbit holes and stuff, I don't know if we're done with this makeup yeah. talk, but I had... Um, you can You can take it wherever you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have my animal law class today, and we're talking about factory farming and um, basically all the laws oh. involved with the that go into the food we eat from animals, yeah. and how there are no federal laws that protect animals which are raised for food. There's like the there's like a federal uh, anti cruelty 
statute, but it, 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 there's a literal exception in it. It doesn't apply to those animals. And there are some state laws, but mm. they're very hard to enforce and uh, frequently too vague to really do anything. Mm. And so everyone was talking about like, oh, the animals are so cute and it's so mean when they do this thing and this practice is barbaric. And I'm just sitting there like all of this is all of this is capitalism. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> Like, su- of course you did. Like, suffering is a byproduct of capitalism, whether it's animal or human, whether we're feeding children into fucking machines that tear their arms off, or we're locking women inside textile factories while they're on fire, we're installing suicide nets outside of Chinese phone companies because the people basically, it's slave labor inside, keep trying to kill themselves. Like, that, it's just, that's the human version of the shit we do to pigs and cows and chickens. And,. Obviously, we feel about animals a, a way, depending on our culture. Sometimes we don't think they're important and we don't care if they suffer. Sometimes we do, but not enough to stop making them suffer. But we do that to humans, yeah. too. And I, so I'm just sitting there, basically, like, with my hands over my face, just like, please, please let me get out of here without exposing myself as a Marxist. <laughs> please, if, so, if I get called on, if someone looks at me, I'm going to just fucking show my whole ass in here. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I got, the, oh. I got through it, and that's how I felt Good. when you brought up the makeup thing because it's just like I have so much inside me that just wants to scream at people. But also, yeah. it's not a big deal. Like, there's a lot of fuck boys out there who gives a fuck what this guy's doing. There's also apps for like literally everything. I, I remember yeah. what it was like to to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know it's yeah, yeah it's. Now I just now I just don't have the energy for it anymore. Frankly, yeah. I'm just I'm just disappointed really? now. Mm-hmm. Is the thing I'm angry. It's not a lot, really but, it's okay. not really a step up. I gotta tell you because like when you're angry, at least you're kind of convinced that you can do something about it. You know, like if you if you yell loud enough or if you like march or like hold a big enough sign, someone's gonna go, "Oh yeah, you've got a good point there." Whereas, like, I just, like, I'm I'm just standing on the street corner just sort of, like, mournfully shaking my head, occasionally occasionally making, like, a single tisk sound. Not even, like, tisk tisk, just, like, one. Just, like, tisk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It only works if everybody's yeah. angry. If just a couple of us are angry, then you're just ineffectual, like, sad, pathetic, angry, yelling people. But if everyone's angry, then maybe we can get something to happen. But it's mm-hmm. hard to convince mm-hmm. people... If, to, for example, no. stop eating meat or right. to, to not, uh, you know, put a pipeline through Native American land mm-hmm. and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Con- people convincing, like money. People to mo- convincing people to mobilize. It's tough enough to convince people even to just go out and vote, That's which is true. like yeah. the very least you can do. That's the bare minimum. And so, so asking people to also protest is like – an extra uh, it's it's a bit much i was um, i was talking to my brother the other day about uh, mandatory voter registration and he was he's was pretty against it and i can see some why? some of his arguments because his thing is like i i'm an adult i don't have to do anything i don't want to do basically and it's like it's you can't just have the government telling people what they need to do it's and i like i get it Man, i think man wait a yeah. minute mandatory voter registration doesn't mean someone takes no. you to the poll yeah. it means you're just registered no i know it's not the same thing i'm aware I'm, he, I'm saying <laughs> I, even just the concept of having to be forced to be in the system or whatever. And and also just the idea that you could be fined for not voting or something. There's like – there's a couple of different levels to it possibly. My thought and what I really wanted to express from this conversation I had, which is longer and I'm leaving things out and you know shortening, is that I think you need to work with human psychology instead of against it. So don't mm. penalize people for not doing things – don't quote unquote force people to do things, even if it's not like like Leon, like you're saying, like it's not literal, like forcing. You just don't want those optics. You want to work with right. human psychology and make people feel like they get bonuses for for doing stuff. You want the, them to feel like they're getting one over on the system. Yes, but it's so it's so strange for them not to realize that voting itself will benefit them if they elect the right people though yeah they, listen it's just that's most, that's a, most it's a losing people battle. don't though yeah we're <laughs> okay. this this planet is going to be uninhabitable in a couple hundred years if not sooner because of our choices the idea that it's here's ride or die baby <laughs> okay here's here's the thing though Austin. Yeah. like if you incentivize and and again i'm just this is the first time i'm like hearing of like the idea of like incentivizing voting beyond the fact that you should be voting mm-hmm. but if you um say hey, sometimes they give you a sticker if 
<laughs> if you like get if you like say get a tax break mm-hmm. for voting, um, guaranteed the people who lost that election will claim that the people who voting are basically being bribed. True. And it's and it, and, that, and that's and that's not what's happening because it's across the board. But that will be a way that it, it that will be a topic. And and listen, at some point you could kind of have to just roll with it because I think that mm. we often overestimate how much that kind of stuff affects the electorate. Like there was a video mm. of someone admitting that they're a sexual assaulter and they got elected president. So at a certain point, just like fuck that shit, right? I just you just have to ride through it. I'm saying that. At the basis level, people want material security, and if you can incentivize uh, political action, progressive political action, by taking advantage of humans' flawed psychology, then I think that's probably what we need to do. Because what we're actually trying to get people out to the polls on is ephemeral. Like, Clinton's message was like, I'm not racist. Like no one cares. Like literally, no one in America. That's not a good message. I cared. I cared a little. I mean, I, I cared, cared. I little cared a little. The fact that she was, <laughs> I did. I really did. It's not a mobilizing message. But like, go, <laughs> go vote for me. I will keep your family from starving. Like literally, the act of voting for me will make your life better. Is a message yeah. people can actually grok. And I have no idea how we got here. But what I'm saying is. We have to stop fighting human psychology. These, it's these. The, the information's out there. We know how people behave. We know how they like to be incentivized. We know how they feel when they f- know they're being manipulated. Uh, you just gotta mm. play the game better. And as so, are you trying to tell me that we should somehow wrap in like randomized loot boxes into <laughs> into voting? A- fucking absolutely. <laughs> Pe- people love loot boxes. Step right up, put a check mark in the box, and then pull the lever. Yeah. No whammies. <laughs> Maybe you could. They could. Everyone could have a card, mm-hmm. and on the tenth time you vote, you get a free sandwich. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something. You joke. I'm a fucking hundred percent serious. What kind of sandwich? I feel like you do because voting is about choice. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a. <laughs> you can maybe even get a specific sandwich depending on like what what kind of. Uh, people you voted for like if you vote for this candidate you get like lettuce and this candidate is tomato and like assembles and at the end of your voting you get the sandwich um, i yeah but i mean how the hell do you <laughs> like assemble a ruben together austin that's just just like a huge mishmash of candidates <laughs> listen politics is complicated <laughs> It sure is, especially when you bring sandwiches into it, I'm, because everyone's got an opinion mm-hmm. on what's a sandwich. I mean, I'm, um, I'm obviously kidding about some of that near the end there, <laughs> but I think it's I think the idea of like voter rewards cards isn't so crazy because then people people intuitively understand lost opportunity, right? Like if the the idea that like oh I, I should have voted, I would have been one step closer to an ice cream sundae. They feel that. And they want that. There's, that's just like something root inside of us in the same way that people are like, mm, got to play this new mobile game today or I'm not going to get my login bonus. Like it's 100% where we're seeing a bunch of industries going. And why not harness that? The fucking that's ghouls it. on the right are going to harness our every bad impulse to make people think there's some kind of fucking – pizza basement fucking conspiracy we're just standing here with our dicks in our hand being like we're not as bad so we might as well let us run everything okay um your your sandwich idea is great i just want you to know that by the way i feel like it was my sandwich idea but your voter incentive thing Mm -hmm. like interesting but i feel like a more practical idea is to just use what countries that have high voter turnout have used to in our country in the same way that we should use a lot of other policies from other countries in our country like <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, like like I just I lick, I just googled what do other countries do to get people to vote and one it says automatically registering everyone to vote mm-hmm. uh weekend voting nationwide election day registration lower voting age which is interesting um compulsory voting that might again that might be the uh yes that that was the p- tricky that one steps that's on the one my freedom I've, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Online voting is also a thing in uh, certain countries, but I feel like the problem there is th- our, our stuff is already hackable, yeah. and I and we're we're too vulnerable. We have too many enemies for that one. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, there are definitely a bunch of actual real strategies that aren't fit for <laughs> yeah. a comedy podcast where I'm trying to <laughs> suggest sandwiches and shit because <laughs> I'm trying to make someone laugh. But yeah, I think that something like that because the the opposite strategy they're running is to try to disenfranchise people and making restrictive voter ID laws and gerrymandering mm-hmm. the shit out of everything. And Democrats' response is basically been like. I don't know. Do you want me to go to a fundraising dinner? Like they don't, they're not doing anything. In, so in in fair in fairness, that uh, redistricting is like the top priority in the Democratic Party um, post uh, last election. It's actually being uh, headed um, by uh, Obama. That is that is that is the thing that he is doing post election. Like that's what he's doing with the rest of his life. Apparently, gerrymandering. Uh, gerrymandering. Uh, well, but the guy's name was originally Gary. Look, Fuck off. let's <laughs> not. Well, actually, but, Leon. Mm-hmm. No, I know it's, I know it's gerrymandering. I was just doing it a is. really is obscure it... joke. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, jokes. because up to the, no, the, like gerrymandering, the, like the guy, it was actually named after. His name was, was, was Gary. It's spelt that way, G-E-R-R-Y. <laughs> but it was pronounced Gary for some reason. So everybody was like, we'll name this after you, gerrymandering. And he yeah, was like, actually... that's not mm. how... Okay. Yeah. Thanks. There's a yeah. there's a thing in evidence law called like the Daubert standard, but it's it should be Daubert. It's like a French name, but like I don't know that whatever Americans happen to have that last name didn't pronounce it that way, so now everyone's just wrong in all of the legal field, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes words mm. words happen. Yeah. Um good good politics talk everyone. <laughs> I, like, I hope I... you really like the Bon Jovi and politics podcast cuz that's what we're serving up hot and fresh this week. Yeah. I have more stuff, uh, but uh, Johnny, if you have any any topics this week, we'll hear you because I feel like uh, Austin and I both uh, started some some shit. I I don't know. If you don't, I, that's I did fine. some I stuff. Other things. You know, I I watched okay. um, I watched the second season of Maria Bamford's Netflix show, Lady Dynamite, that Austin can't stomach because okay. it's just way too awkward. <laughs> um, I didn't think we were going to get a second season of that, and I was delighted by it. Mm. Um. It it does some some weird meta stuff. Like it, okay. uh, if you watch if you watch the first season, you you will know that it's kind of split up between sort of three eras, um, which are um, previous to her nervous breakdown when she was um, just sort of like getting going in show business, like like when the the speed was starting to ramp up a little bit. Um, Post nervous breakdown, where she was back at her family home in Duluth, um, having uh, treatment done at a psychiatric hospital there, and then <clears throat> modern day, where she's just uh, kind of living her life and, and and trying to do things. The the second season does present day as well, where um, spoiler at the at the end of the first season, she gets a steady boyfriend. Okay. So a lot of the present day stuff is about navigating a relationship. And then it does past as well, but past when she was like a, a child in, in high school and middle school and things like that, which is all about sort of navigating the relationship with her parents. And then it does, does this Maria weird... Maria Bamford also play the teenage version of herself? Yes. And then, and then <laughs> it does this weird, like, uh, finger quotes, kind of like future, huh. which is like so very obviously making kind of the first season of this show. So it's it's this weird, you know, like, but they, they make jokes about it, about how instead of Netflix, it's called Muscovision because it's owned by Elon Musk. And, <sighs> like, it's it's it very quickly becomes just absolutely ridiculous. But, uh, you know, it, it really it really navigates her stressors about trying to deal with like having a relationship with her her partner and like all these old friends that that like making a show about her upbringing is 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 bringing back and like dealing with all these people in show business that used to cause her her stress and difficulty and 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 things like that so it's it's kind of this weird delightful self-aware presentation almost of itself in a certain way mm-hmm. And Andy Samberg's in it, and he's funny. Oh, okay. Um, I like him. Yes, yeah. He 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 does. He's he's not doesn't play a major role, but uh, but he he shows up a few times, and um, it's it's amusing. 
Um, so it was good. But again, you know, like, it doesn't stray too far from the first season in terms of tone, and I understand that Maria Bamford's not for everybody, but... I really, I really like her. I really like the work she does. I really like the 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 um, the attitude behind a lot of her comedy. Um, how um, how honest she is about her own personal struggles that speaks to me. That's that's something mm. that I suppose I do as well um, to a certain degree. Um, okay. So yeah, that was that's that's good. That's fun. I enjoyed that. I also. Um, um, because Visceral Games closed down, I took the opportunity this past week to play through the first two Dead Space games again. Mm-hmm. Austin, did you ever play the Dead Space games? I know Leon didn't. No, no. Yes, I did, and I actually reviewed some of them for BT. Remember when you used to write about video games? That was a thing. I have a vague recollection. <laughs> yeah, of, Dead Space of 1 and 2 a video game critically. What? Dead Space 1 and 2 are fucking dope. Uh, they three, are. 3 less so. Well, I didn't want to play three again because it just, yeah, less so. That, that it got a nine point five from Game Informer, which literally no one in the industry has ever let go. I literally still still see people talking about it all the time. It's great. <laughs> anyway, go on. I am. I am. This is the thing: is that I, 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 I remembered. I seem to recall that, to me at least, anyways, Dead Space Two was better than Dead Space One. And, but, but I playing it yeah. this past week, not at all. Really? Yeah, not at all. I enjoyed Dead Space 1 way more than 2. I think it's it's kind of an alien-alien situation where 1 is more, like, claustrophobic and more personal and 2, like, ups the stakes. So mm-hmm. if you play... It's like, it feels like, oh, it's Dead Space 1 but more, which is, you know, quantifiably better? But I definitely see how on a taste kind of scale you could just prefer Dead Space 1. That's totally fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not suggesting that one's a better game than the other or anything like that, but, you know, I, I just, I found that, that the first one appealed to me more, playing them, like, back-to-back like that, you know? Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I it, was, it was a weird, I wonder if that's expressive of my tastes changing as I age. <laughs> mm. Maybe, maybe so. <laughs> oh but, um... Yeah, they still work though. Both of them, both of them still work. There's still some like pretty good action set pieces in the second one, and and yeah, and just the the I don't know the atmosphere of the Ishimura in the first one. Like it was, it's such a great locale. It has this real feel to it, you know. Like there are some video games that just they they feel so constructed because they have to take place somewhere. So some guy is like, I guess I'll make a, make a spaceship or something like that. But it just it feels like it's a real place, and it was real. It was nice to savor that. It was really nice to just you know dive back in. I don't get a chance to play as many old games these days because they just they come out faster than I can breathe. And there's so many of them that I haven't played yet, and I feel like I'm o- I should always move on to the next one and like absorb as much new information as possible, lest we stagnate and die. Um, oh my! Not necessarily like right immediately next to each other, but you know, maybe within a week or something like that. Um, and it was just it was kind of refreshing to go back to something to have that excuse. And and in, in investigate those. I had and that was kind of nice because I don't I don't do that. I don't get a chance to to look back wistfully as much these days. He says as he strokes whatever it is that's growing out of his chin right now. <laughs> How is your beard? It's I'm it's slow going, man. Like <laughs> it's I like have I talked about shaving on the show. I know I've talked about how I have like a straight razor and I shave with that and shit like that. But like have I told you guys that normally speaking in order to keep a face that looks reasonably well groomed I only have to shave like twice a week. Hmm. It just like that's that's just the way it is. It it uh-huh. it has it has never been otherwise. Um, mm. I I shave constantly, as previously indicated. Yes, I know, but you like to be squeaky clean, don't you? Oh yes. But I oh, yes. like, and this is you know, this is not like five o'clock shadow. This is like if I shave on a Sunday, I like get a little bit of stubble on Wednesday. Hmm. 
So it's it's slow going, and it it tends to grow in in a a a, a pre established pattern. Like it doesn't it it doesn't really look like a like a a lumberjack beard, you know. Mm, yeah. You guys will see. By the end of <laughs> I, by the I'm end of November, I'm probably gonna get brave enough to take a photo of this. Okay. But it's 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 arduous, is what it is. It's it's oh. and arborist in a in a certain way. Oh. Which okay. was a um, word play on hedge trimming. There you go. Yep. So I don't like Elon Musk. Uh, just going back to that for a second, because he thinks he's in a video game, and that's all I have to say about that. Um, but there's a lot of people who do. Yeah, I know. That's the, I, 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 and I hate that they have a voice. <laughs> I mean, he's allowed to think whatever he wants. The problem is that he uses his wealth, which he has basically accumulated through some genuine innovation and you know good things, and also through our broken tax system and you know off, offshore shelters and so forth. And then he uses that in ways that are just personally interesting to him and not beneficial to everyone who is you know being priced out of Silicon Valley and all that kind of garbage so like the, if, you, if you don't think anything's real it's easy to not care that's true i just want to say like the problems that elon musk has are less so that he like has a cool premise for a novel <laughs> and that he's just a, a shitty rich guy which is a problem all rich people have <laughs> together this this is the okay. funny thing though is that like if you if you don't think anything is real but you don't have an actual conceived notion of what reality is and what is real, this is just as good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, he, can think, I just, he can think whatever he wants. I'm just saying we should raise his taxes. That's fine. I just hate radical skepticism uh, on principle. Um, I have another thing I want to talk about, mm -hmm. uh, and it's the Antichrist. Um, Which love that guy. But, 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 but it's not what you think uh, I'm about to talk about. So I, I, I was looking through... Um, I was adding more tags to my to my videos the other day um, because it helps. Um, it's just a thing I have to do. Um, so I was updating my tags, and I was looking at what are my most uh, popular videos. And uh, unfortunately, the, the most popular one is an, a very old one and very flawed and bad and wrong one about uh, Werner Herzog. And the reason it is my top one is because it has a number in the title, and that helps when someone says, the top something, mm, that mm, is just – it's just – it's some, it's some kind of SEO like uh, like miracle, uh, and I I haven't done it since. Um, but my se my I second mean, one, Leon, to dovetail around just because human psychology is fucking busted, and we just love putting things in order in categories. I the top I I three French pastries that look exactly like Werner Herzog. The top okay. six things you can give people to get them to vote. Oh my. Okay. So anyway. Um, the second one I was looking at, the second most popular video is my one on Antichrist, um, the uh, Lars von Trier film, of which I have complicated feelings. Um, it's a fine episode. It's not my best, it, but it's good. Um, but I was wondering, I was wondering, I was looking at it, I was like, why is this my most popular video? Like, why, why does anyone care this much about this movie or my take on it, of all things? Because everybody's hoping to get a look at that sweet Willem Dafoe wang. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, my Batman v Superman uh, video also did very, very well, but, like, not as well. But that's, like, a recent movie of which everyone has a strong opinion about. Um, so that makes sense to me. So I was thinking about it for a minute. I was like, oh, it's because people are just searching for the word Antichrist on YouTube. And it has nothing to do with the movie or my take on the movie. Um, people just search for Antichrist a lot. And I know that because it pops up. In 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 other videos that have nothing to do with the Antichrist on my on my channel. In fairness, say, Leon, all right. Yeah. If I was looking for the actual Antichrist, I think YouTube would be a great place to start. That's fair. Um, but yeah, like like um, here's the thing. Like if you type or Reddit, if maybe. you type in Antichrist, you would think, oh, what's going to happen here is a bunch of things explaining why there's no Antichrist. Or where that term comes from, but no, it's just like a bunch of people's theories about who is going to be the Antichrist. And I, I, it's weird because like you can type in an innocuous term, uh, not that Antichrist is like that innocuous, but you can type in an innocuous term into YouTube and just get shit. Like I needed to get some um like stock footage of like um 
like old news news footage of the Pope uh, the other day. It's it's necessary for my movie. Um, uh, you know, so I was looking for some like um, free stock footage of the Pope. So I just typed in Pope into YouTube, and all and so many results are about Pope conspiracy theories and the Pope is the Antichrist and just all kinds of awful shit. And the terrible thing is, like, for people who are kind of like raised on YouTube and raised on the internet in general, oh. like, oh. they th oh. th they think that those are the most important topics about Pope because YouTube just told them it was. It's not. The most important topics about the Pope are who was the Pope, <laughs> basically, like, the list lists of Popes and what they did, not um, wacky magic stuff that the Pope definitely does not do. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. It's funny that you bring this. I'm um, actually, sorry, I'm going to let you finish. I'll, I'll, I'll make my point in a second. No, no, that, 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 that was my point. I could go on and on about other in instances of this, but please go. Ahead. I had, I had this, I had a conversation the other week with someone about mm -hmm. how bothered I'm, I'm getting that, that we have tech companies. Cause all this stuff is coming to a head right now. What with like, you know, Russian news and paying Facebook and, you know, yeah. YouTube and Google and Twitter trolls and things like that. Is that I, I, like I had a conversation with someone about how frustrated I was getting that these companies are like increasingly getting away with this concept that they are a platform and a platform only. And and like you know, don't don't get me wrong. Where I'm I'm not suggesting that like you know once once you start regulating content on the internet, um, it's it's a little. We need smarter people than me to basically like write the rules out for these things, but it it seems so strange to me that the reason why like all these platforms retain value is because they manage to keep people's attention so much. It's always about, like, you know, keep scrolling down Facebook, go to the next post. Like, YouTube's like, oh, hey, do you want to watch this video next? So, like, in, in, in essentially in advertising themselves, they're pushing all this information to the front without, without moderating it, without, you know, because they, they want to keep eyes, they want to keep attention, they want to keep clicks and things like that. But, oh, we're, you know, we're just a platform, even though we're going to do absolutely everything we can to advertise content and material to keep the person tuned in. And, like, I, I just, I, I can't believe that everybody's still okay with that. Well, it, it's the thing is, <clears throat> sorry, my voice just went in the middle of me trying to make a really smart, cool point that would have made everyone really impressed. And now I'm just everything you said because you just came yeah. out of the gate so weak, Austin. Yeah, Try again. Okay, so what I was going to say is, though, is this whole myth of, like, the algorithm being impersonal. They're like, oh, Facebook, we just do we just did math and everything else is out of our hands. But, like, mm. algorithms are created by people. People have biases and agenda. And they're, they're not mystical. They're not divine. They're not apart from human experience. They prioritize whatever the programmer wanted to prioritize. And so when Facebook gives you a never-ending stream of propaganda that is literally untrue that's not because the machine gods willed it it's because they their numbers told them that the way to best maximize your engagement with their platform and therefore maximize their revenue was to do it in a certain way and that they are okay with the collateral damage of that decision yeah. everyone at yeah. some level well, had to be okay with that well, the cre the creation of basically um, like YouTube and other um, sites being just entirely automated, it's not just so they can save money on customer service representatives. It's also um, to distance themselves from responsibility. I mean, I'm I'm aware of that, but it just seems it seems really strange to me that I'm, say I'm saying the distance is uh, is illusory. It's not real. It's a fiction. That well, we've all no, of course. Into. <laughs> No, it's not. It's not magic. They created the automation. Just they made it automated, but someone had to type it in. It, yeah, it, of course. It's a comfortable lie told to people who don't understand technology, basically. Mm. And I think I don't know if we're ever going to really reckon with that. I, I hope someday. But there is this idea of like, oh, math can't be racist. We just punched in the numbers, and it said they should live <laughs> over there. But like, oh my god, no, that's okay. So I'm alluding to yeah. actual real things, but I don't know if we have time to get into that. There, there's yeah, there, there's a lot of people out there who are trying to use math and science 
to cloak social policies which come from ideology and that's also something we have to kind of start fucking putting some brakes on is this idea that like stem is better and infallible and everything else is just kind of like fucking around it's like no like our human brains and sociology and all that stuff psychology that the the basically the humanities are just as if not more important in many ways because they actually govern how people treat each other and we just have to mm-hmm. be fucking cognizant of that for like a second. There's there's mm-hmm. a lot of there there's a lot of people doing things because they can, but not necessarily asking should. Well, yeah, I mean that goes back to the the factory farming that I was talking about earlier. It's like I don't think any on any level people thought, hmm, I think I should let these children operate this heavy machinery that's going to rip their limbs off. But the idea was we're going to make more money doing that than we're going to lose when the bad things happen. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's totally uh, it's it's it comes down to money in a really boring way. Like I I th- I feel like when Leon, if you talk about like people love fucking the Pope is the Antichrist shit, it's because it's interesting. In the same way, people loved that like Hillary Clinton's emails or whatever is because they thought it was interesting. It doesn't matter that yeah. there are much better criticisms of her, like how she's po- supported the Iraq War or like flipped on gay rights or anything. They're not excited about that. They want to talk about emails. They also like. The the idea that uh, the Pope is the Antichrist is just more exciting than the fact that he uh, may have known about abuse within the churches and co- helped to cover it up. I don't know why, but that that actually sounds way scarier to me. And yet, but I guess I'm like an outlier there. Incidentally, fellas, one of Hillary's emails that was dumped in that <laughs> giant info dump: "Hot young uh-huh. Antichrists in your area." <laughs> yeah. Oh, you you would not believe here. Um, this is. Uh, I did I mention the fact that someone uh, sent a um, satanic Hillary Clinton email <laughs> comment in one of my um, uh, comment sections. I don't know if I ever talked. About I don't that know, one. but it's, it um, sounds one hundred percent reasonable because uh, what is it about <laughs> Satan particularly? I guess this goes back to like my constant running theme of like the satanic panics of the eighties in America and like mm-hmm. the UK. Where, like, people suddenly became ex- extremely convinced that all daycares were secretly run by Satan worshippers who were doing, like, rituals and shit. And, like, not only is it just provably untrue, it's it was premised on, like, a very specific lie by a very specific liar that you could just point to. And it just didn't d- d- deter anyone. And yeah, well, Austin, yeah. you know, people are still worried about vaccines and autism. True. Like it's and again, just the same way. You can go, oh no, it was that guy, and he's not a doctor anymore. And yeah. look at all the info he falsified. I, yeah, I don't know. I've been thinking about that stuff recently too, because fucking Roy Moore in Alabama is absolutely a fucking predator. But not. I mean, yeah. not only did the people in Alabama not care, his poll polling numbers went up, especially among evangelicals specifically. Well, he's one of ours. We have to stick by him. Yeah, I get. It's just that I don't know what is within us as a species where we're we can just turn a blind eye to human suffering if it bores us. If it's just like that, I don't care about that. And I guess we probably do it. Like there's people like suffering all over the world that I I'm not invested in. I guess, and so I'm being hypocritical on some level. But it's just a constant frustration for me that the information is out there and while i think i at least do some d- due diligence in finding it a lot of people don't and i just want to grab them and shake them and just be like what if it was you wouldn't you want someone to care it's just on some level do you not feel bad or is it how do you live I feel bad every time I, like, do anything that could even remotely be described as wrong. And these people are just, I don't know. I'm losing it now. This is just a fucking hole. I'm falling. <laughs> Help me, somebody. Okay. Uh, all right. Why is everyone scared of the devil, by the way? And I don't mean, like, because there's probably not one. Um, <laughs> I, I I just, I mean, like, like, within Christianity, the idea that God and the devil are in a competition for souls is a very early Christian idea in the uh, patristic period uh, and it hasn't been popular since. And then somehow people decided that the devil was on equal footing again. Yeah. And that made people think that 
I, I don't know. I talked I don't, about I, this I, back I, when we talked. Oh my god, it was like 150 episodes ago. We talked a lot about <laughs> how the Antichrist isn't what anyone thinks it is, and how Satan right. isn't what anyone thinks it is. The fact is that a lot of Christians only care about the Hollywood or like I guess Dante's Inferno version of Christianity, which mm-hmm. is not supported by the text, and that's because yeah. the actual text is a super boring and b <laughs> mostly about how cool helping poor people is yeah. they just they don't Doesn't want the snacks, actual message you know <laughs> yeah the idea that yeah. there's a super villain out there and you can beat him up if you own the libs hard enough like that's what they care yeah. about Sto- stories need an antagonist and if there is none they'll have to create one basically yeah the antagonist um, is being a bad person and yeah it should be <laughs> but that's you get more money if you're bad so oh god like i, uh, I know we have i have like literally like six phrases and i just keep spitting them into this microphone i'm sorry <laughs> if this is fucking annoying but it is be, a be lot good of and also cap be good and capitalism is bad i understand <laughs> be kind money isn't important anyway okay all right also the it's devil is important. super cool though like <laughs> all the art of him <laughs> What? He always has like really cool like fucking duds. Like he's always looking like super fly, and he's like covered in fire and shit. Like he's a cool dude. And like he has to he he has to look tempting. Like yeah. other, I mean, if he was just like some shit, then you would be like, why would we even care? But if he looks like, oh, I mean, I'd fuck it. Yeah. Then then <laughs> you're like, oh, this is why we're supposed to be afraid. I guess. So that was I, that was I guess your that's that was your first reaction to Al Pacino and the, the Devil's Advocate. Look, someone did. I, there, I mean, we're joking, but there is like some kind of virility subtext to a lot of depictions of Satan. Like he's often have like mm. cloven hooves, and that's kind of a, a thing about like you know the anim- like bulls, basically, that which are a virility symbol, basically. And especially mm-hmm. a lot of ancient cultures, you have like the um, Baal, the the calf. You you remember from that story? It's like the the god of fertility and stuff and storms as well. But it's just like oh. this the strong manly yeah. someone like that you tempting. can look at and go. I bet you that guy issues like a horse. <laughs> yeah, th- definitely. But also, just if read the actual text of the Bible, and it's almost now. I'm trying to, to avoid generalizing too much so that becomes useless. There's a lot of sexual allegory to faith. So, like, people mm. who bel- believe in God and follow his commandments are faithful, and people who follow false idols are whores. Like, that, mm. that is literally there. That Like, I'm not using yeah. literally to mean figuratively as an intensifier. I'm saying those words are on the page. And the yeah. idea that, like the the sexy false tempting demons or whatever are like hot is subtextual to some <laughs> right. of this and like god isn't sexy oh he's your dad like <laughs> in the bible <laughs> yahweh is like your old man and you need to listen to him or you're gonna get the switch but like ball like he's 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 kind of rocking those booty shorts like you have to admit okay um, I actually just, uh, finished recording edit and editing the, uh, part of, uh, the Left Behind movie that is explicitly about what we're talking about. So that's, 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 that's fun. Um, so, uh, other topics besides the fuckability of the devil. <laughs> that's really the only important one. I mean, yeah, but like, we got to move on. <laughs> Do we though? Um, I, I watched some <laughs> movies and stuff I can talk about. I've been hearing a lot of my own voice though. So Leon, if you want to take, some oh, time. I, I can talk about, I can, I can talk about movies. I watched, yeah, get in there. um, I don't, you know, the, it, I, I don't know if I have anything funny to say. That's, that's the concern. They were just very good movies. Um, I went to, uh, see, um, the killing of a sacred deer, which is, uh, Yorgos Lanthimos's, uh, new movie. He did Dogtooth and The Lobster, and those were very good. So it was like, I bet I'll like this one, and I did. Uh, it w- if you didn't like those movies, you won't like this one, because in tone, it is very similar. Um, that's not to say it's, it's, the, it's the same movie with the same plot. or the same. It's just, if I did not know this director did it, I would assume it was just how the characters talk to each other. Um, it was very much him. Uh so yeah, it, but it was very good. Um, basically, um, without getting into like too many spoilers, um, there's a doctor, and he may have uh, screwed up someone's surgery, and because of this, um, the child of the guy who died uh, 
it isn't explicitly explained how this is happening, but more or less cursed his family and all kinds of crazy shenanigans happen. It is tragic and funny, um, which is hard to do, but he did it. Um, it's very good. And I recommend seeing it. Uh, I also saw the square, which is a Swedish film and it was also great. Um, it is about uh, a it's about a museum the on goings on of a museum which again does not sound exciting but it is actually um, kind of funny and uh, the guy gets mugged and uh, like a lot of elaborate things happen after that because he wants to like get revenge and then he realizes how foolish he's being and well that that's a spoiler I guess um, there's a message. Um, but, uh, it's good. It's very good. Um, they're probably a couple of my favorite films of the year and I got to see them within the span of a few days. So that was fun. I'm seeing justice league tomorrow with, uh, with, uh, Jess and Darren. Uh, so that should be fun. Um, rotten tomatoes decided not to share their tomato score for, uh, justice league until a few hours after we are done here, uh, tonight, even though the reviews came out, uh, like 12 hours ago. Um, some people think it's because uh, Rotten Tomatoes is has like their Warner Brothers has a thirty percent stake in Rotten Tomatoes, and the other seventy percent is the company that is very much tied up in you getting you buying tickets to this thing. Um, huh. Or, Weird. Or yeah. <laughs> or it could just or there there's another theory, but it's also just capitalism. Uh, often. <laughs> it's uh, a. <laughs> Yeah, the other theory is that they're releasing the information a minute after midnight tonight. Um, we're recording this on Wednesday for everyone listening. Um, the uh, because they're they're doing it on their new Facebook show or something like that. Which so one way or another, they are delaying. You know what we were expecting to get about twelve hours ago, um, to for 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 some sort of monetary gain, um, which is fine. I, I mean they're they're you know, I'm using finger quotes here, entitled to do that because it's their company. But at some point, like, a service becomes so ubiquitous that it may as well be, like, a utility. So I feel a little, like, annoyed by this. It's like there's a power outage in my area. <laughs> it's like, you can't do this. Um, it's not cool. Um, but whatever, it's your company. Um, I just read a bunch of reviews instead, and most of them were scathing. So, um this is cool. this is probably the like most anyone has actually been re- reading reviews text in quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I woke up. Uh, I I it, the review embargo ended uh, at two fifty a.m. Eastern. Um, I woke up. I was not going to stay up. You know, even close to that. So um, I went to sleep and I woke up at nine in the morning because I had things to do. And I read ten reviews and they were almost all bad. And the two that were good were like eh, you know like c plus um you know so nobody is no review i have not seen a review that is enthusiastic about it i have seen reviews that are either finger waggy or um pleased that it wasn't as bad as suicide squad Mm, I guess. That's the I, highest of bars. <laughs> it is. It, I know. I know. Uh, so whatever. Um, maybe like all of this is bullshit, and like I've only read like the bad ones, and then the Rotten Tomato score is going to come out, and it's like seventy nine percent. But I sincerely doubt it. It's probably going to be um, rotten. It's probably going to be bad. But whatever. Um, the point is like, I I, I don't want to like give too much power to Rotten Tomatoes here because they're just weighing something. They're not, you know, th- but it's, it's, I've, I have found it convenient to have everything in one spot so I can just click on the reviews there instead of searching through endless, you know, Googling. Um, we, I, we, like, we like to tell ourselves that we want informed, intelligent reviews by people with the training to understand movies on a deeper level, but the free yeah. market clearly indicates <laughs> people want numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they want. I'm not trying to be cynical. I'm saying I ran a video games review website. People want yep. the number. Give me the number. <laughs> That's what they want. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that happened. Um, that's what I have to say about that. If we, we have a few minutes before our questions, if anyone has anything important to say. I don't know about important. Um, I saw two movies. I I don't know if I talked about these. I, I saw some a while ago, but I was like holding off for some reason, or I forgot. I don't know. It's not important. Uh, did we talk about John Wick two on the show? 
No, I don't think we did. I think, I'm not sure. I saw it, and, you know, it was good, and I, you know, felt uncomfortable in how good it was, you know. <laughs> because of all the guns? <laughs> yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. But it was good. I mean, it certainly was. Like, I've I've said before, like, um... They're trying. Never mind. Par, par, parsing out how how good a movie is with how bad its politics are, or or, or, or even just optics are, yeah. um, is kind of like a struggle. But the movie was so good that the fact that there were a lot of guns. If if the movie inst- instead of just glorifying you know gun violence, which is what all almost all action movies did, went a step further, and John Wick looked at his gun <laughs> and it was like out of my cold, dead hands. If he said that, then I would be like, that's one step too far, and now I hate you. Um, but no, it was just it was just an action movie, and there were there was gun-fu in it. Um, you know, it's it's whatever. But I, I it, it sure was good at doing that. Man, I saw a trailer for the, the Death Wish remake when I went to see Blade Runner, and it was the creepiest shit I have ever seen. It was just them all being like, uh, what if I fuck this gun? Let me lube this barrel. <laughs> Oh, look at the <laughs> bullets. I'm going to put the bullets in my butt. <laughs> it was yeah. fucking the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it was also the, the, the it wasn't so much the guns for me as it was just um the idea that he is being painted very much as the good guy that he is going to go out and shoot people who he, he believes should die. Yeah, I mean it's it's um, death wish. So yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen the original Death ah. Wish. Apparently, the book was anti all of that, yeah. and the movie was not. And this movie is just Bruce Willis killing people and people saying, should you do this? And then everyone's all saying, somebody needs to. Um, like, I could be wrong. It's your but classic Eli Starship is... Trooper scenario. <laughs> no, no, it's just bad. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, I, I'm nearly. I, look here. I could be. To- maybe, maybe, maybe I'm definitely wrong. And if I am, I'm very, very sorry. But Eli Roth is directing it, so I just assume it's politics. Or oh, bad. of course. No, listen. The Bruce Willis remake of Death Wish is going to be uh, offensive to human life. Like it's going to be very, yeah. very, 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 very bad. Although, I mean. What, I don't know what you're expecting from anyone involved. The The thing that interests me about all of this was that I saw that trailer like two days after the biggest shooting in American history or whatever. Mm. And just like no one thought not to show that trailer in a movie theater. And that's just how like totally numb to it we all are. And the fact that pe- in pe- this environment they would even have made it in the first place. People don't – yeah, but the, here's the thing. People do not – um connect one to the other i do uh, especially, especially I, I understand that i understand that but but when i say people don't connect one to the other i mean people think entertainment is like sacred and therefore it cannot be uh criticized in relation to something real and that they're they're wrong they are super wrong but there is this there's this feeling that that's true at least in america where entertainment is king um and people and people think that um Never mind. I don't want to get into too much of a big thing about this. People know my feelings about this by now. I, I hope. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I just. I guess going back to the original thing was John Wick Two, which was a movie I went yeah. into not having really any expectations or trying not to because the first one could be seen as a fluke. Like it was, you know, someone who wasn't really like super hot as an actor doing kind of a generic story about revenge. It could have been a straight to like streaming action flick without any fanfare, and it just turned out super dope. And so I was worried that yeah. for the second one, they may have just tried to recreate that like, in a really boring way or maybe just tried to up it in a really um, – just like a perfunctory way. Like, oh, there's more dudes this time. He has more guns. <laughs> but like what they did in kind of evolving their weird universe – like there's world building here. This is a world that yeah. seems to be mostly made up of assassins. And that's why some of the stuff with guns didn't bother me as much because it's kind of like an alternate history where it's like everyone is shooting everyone constantly. And then just like the visuals which are more – interesting in ways which aren't just going through the motions it's not like they just added yeah. more of what was there they really kicked it up and brought something special to it and john wick 2 is just really really good and it doesn't fall into any of the traps that sequels do but especially sequels to like movies that no one had any expectations for which are usually yeah. very very bad yeah my favorite part of john wick 2 was when he uh he needs to go to italy and he meets someone there and the guy looks at him and he says, are you here to kill the Pope? And yeah, that's very good. He's like, no, 
He he doesn't even look that offended by it. He's just like, no, not this time. Yeah, you know, it, <laughs> it's this is a universe where that's a reasonable question to ask. Also, like, there's yeah. a part where the two people, one guy's on the first floor and one guy's on the second floor, and they're shooting silenced pistols at each other, and no one else in the building notices, even though it's packed with people. Which is not. Yeah. I mean, silencers are misnamed. They're suppressors, right? No, you cannot silence the kinetic energy from a gun. Uh, everyone in there would have heard it, but it, no one does, and that leads me to believe this is like a sci-fi universe with different silencers. Like uh, John Wick, to me, is like uh, not our reality, and I think that is interesting. And I, I hope that every sequel like explores just enough to raise new questions without just laying it all out. I like that about okay. it. All right. So John Wick. Uh, the other movie that I have written in my sticky note here is Get Out, which I saw a while ago, but oh. I have I keep feeling like. Can't talk about that yet. I don't want to spoil anything. Even if I talk about it in a non-spoiler way, someone might infer something. <laughs> I don't want that. But have you guys seen Get Out? Yeah, I saw it in the theaters. I, it was I great. have not. Okay. So, I don't, like I said, I don't want to say too much. <clears throat> but uh, it's back in the news because it was nominated for, I don't know if it was an Oscar or Golden Globe or something. And it was Golden Globe. Golden Globe and it's in the comedy yeah category and it's not a comedy yeah. and so it's kind of hot to be talking about get out right now so i guess that i'm taking this opportunity to do so um okay. as most people know i think it's a it's a kind of horror movie about um positive racism as it were because it's easy to do a movie <laughs> about negative racism or like obvious racism kkk you know that kind of stuff you can just do the damn thing because it's real and people see it and it's it clicks in your brain but the other kind of racism the more insidious kind is where like people it, it's kind of like the liberal racism right like the democratic racism which is like <laughs> to just be like dehumanizingly like night it, it, nice it's, a, it's yeah like, like it's like um, eroticizing and fetishizing mm -hmm. um, black people in a way that's like that is like depersonalizing yeah. them. Like, yeah, you're not a person. You're just like a cool costume. You're like a cool culture. <laughs> you're just like, I wish I was black. I'd be good at stuff. Or like, you know, I I I love Kanye or whatever. You know, it's just, <laughs> which is a thing I do as well. So it sure yeah. is. Uh, it's yeah. I don't want to say too much, but it's a horror movie about the way that white people make themselves feel about blackness in America. It, like yeah. Americans are the are, like a white American specifically are like the the, the Freddy Krueger of black people, and it's just like. <laughs> There's nothing comedic about that. Like it's there's parts where people say things that are you're supposed to laugh at because a good horror movie has tension and releases and builds at different points because that's how the fucking structure of a film works. But it is ludicrous to think that it's comedy. I'm not like mad. I'm not outraged. I just think it's indicative of the white establishment not understanding that they're being fucking dunked on brutally to their goddamn faces. It's it's I I feel like um it's less about ignorance about the topic of the film and more just it's it's more um pragmatic they thought that that would get the movie the better chance of getting the award and therefore more prestige and so they said well that movie has some some funny stuff just like the martian so let's so let's make it uh so we'll put it in the comedy category and maybe it'll win and i don't know maybe it will get nominated um, i mean because how, it was... how cynical is that though it's like well it can't, it it can't win yeah, in a real it's... category so let's put it in an easy <laughs> one so we can give a token award to the nice black film it, of course, of course, it's it is. But what I'm trying to say is like this doesn't make it better. It definitely no, does I not. Know. It might be worse. But I'm just saying like the reason is not malicious. It's it's um. But that's the point of get out. It's I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I understand that. Um, oh, oh well. Um, it, yeah, I, I do. It. The only thing, I, other thing, I thought was I read that they originally had a different ending, which is I don't know if it would have been better or not. But the seeing the way it ended i thought it was going to go the one way and it didn't and then i read that it was originally going to go that way and i'm fascinated by the alternate universe because i think that sends a such a different message and like i think are both are good artistic statements and that's really unusual usually like an alternate ending it's just like one's better than the other like i am legend has a terrible ending <laughs> like the original like it wasn't fully completed like the effects weren't completed but i've seen it like a rough cut of it and it's better. Yeah. yeah. So um I I'm I might be a little biased here, but um 
the crowd that I watched Get Out with was extremely happy about the way yeah. Get Out ended. Wait, yeah, so which... that in- that enthusiasm washed over me, yeah. and I I love the ending. I, yeah, I, which is why I assume they went for it. I understand the decision, and I probably would have done the same thing in their shoes, honestly. Not that my fucking opinion as a white viewer matters on the production <laughs> of this movie, but I'm just like, I get it. But mm. I'm also just interested yeah. in the alternate, so... That's just a th- I thought I want someone to have heard me say out loud, <laughs> and now I've done that. Okay, that's cool. Um, want to do questions, guys? Do I though? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna read from the top. I didn't really get a chance to skim these. Uh, Sairetha asks, right. Johnny, do you bake cookies? No, I'm not. I'm not really much of a baker. I don't really have a sweet tooth. Um, mm. When I oh. do bake stuff, it's usually savory. So like breads, um, like. Uh, I've been trying to. I, I've been thinking about trying pretzels. I want to try pretzels <laughs> one of these days. But like breads, oh. biscuits, Yorkshire puddings, you know, bread puddings, yeah. things like that. Savory stuff, not not cookies. Now, do you know pretzels yeah. have a Christian origin? I'm trying to remember the exact yep. story, but there there's something in there that they they have some kind of. Uh, Is it Jesus's flesh? It's yeah, monks. Monks. A monk made it. Uh, and the um. I mean, this this might be apocryphal. Yeah. Like some someone can tell like tell me in the comments that I'm full of shit. But the story anyway is that a monk made it, and the um the shape is supposed to be someone praying. Yeah. Um. I again, that might be bullshit. That might just be like a story that people tell other people. But that is the story. Yeah, I'm on the Wikipedia um, page now, and it lays out that story, and then it says, however, there is no known historical evidence to verify this claim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what I mean. Um, I do have a sweet tooth. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine just um, baked me an apple crumble that I'm going to eat immediately after I'm done uh, this podcast. So hell yes, I'm about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't bake I don't bake either. But sometimes people give me things and I just buy it from the store, uh, <laughs> and that's good enough for me. Yeah, I feel bad because I kind of wanted to, to spend a whole like segment talking about cooking shows recently because I've been watching a lot of them, and I guess I'll just dump it all here. Like. I've talked before okay. about that show Chef's Table on Netflix that I really like and how I have complicated feelings about food as art because people are starving in the world. But mm-hmm. it is an interesting art form that combines like aesthetics and history and culture and expression and science. And like it's like it's so complex and it's really interesting. And they've gotten cooking shows down to an art form it's it's such a popular form and there's so many expressions and there's so much iteration that they've got it down to like a fine science so like even like trashy cooking shows are pretty good and i've, I've talked about it before about how i've watched like chopped and like those kind of competition ones and i recently i've been watching great british bake-off and there's an australian show called uh zumbo's just desserts that just got added to netflix and i've been really into that Z- zumbo is like a delightful australian man who seems like he was once in a gang and killed a man, but then sorted his life out. And none of that is explicit. <laughs> I'm reading the subtext into the into that. <laughs> okay. But a thing I like about those shows is that like everyone's pretty nice to each other. I feel like there was a while there where cooking shows were mean. But I guess because of Gordon Ramsay was like really popular, so it was like all the rage to just have like the host constantly shitting on everybody and just being a real fucking dick. But, like, Great British Bake Off is, like, delightful, and everyone's really supportive. And when you get voted off, they hug you. <laughs> like, it's just, like, nice. And I like that. And I think cooking shows are pretty chill. I like them a lot. But I don't really cook. I just think it's a cool art form. And I mean, cooking shows are an art form within an art form because you're making a show about someone making food. Yeah. Yeah. There's more there. I could go on. Cooking shows are, are fascinating. But next question. Okay. Um, sure. Let's see. Yeah, people asking about the Justice League movie. We haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we we can't. It's 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 Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I, when we're doing this, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I think sometimes people don't know when we record this, which is fine. Like I don't have every every okay. entertainer's schedule memorized. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, Marsh. Uh, <laughs> they've changed their name. It says Marsh. Get rid of the Nazis. Bright, which is a good name. Yeah. Uh, favorite rapper or rap group. Leon, Leon, <laughs> Leon, I know, Austin, this is, this is, Leon, you. I know I mean, you have strong rap opinions. No. Um, I guess it'd be either Chance or Kendrick. Um, Kendrick okay. Lamar's, uh, shit is just so fucking good right now. It has been since Good Kid Mad City that it's hard to argue with. 
I think people say that Chance has uh, some weaker early material, um, but I think it's always connected with me on an emotional level. Um, that's that's my off the top of my head. Obviously, there's there's a lot of really good shit out there, but that's my. I don't want to get us bogged down if neither of you guys have answers. Johnny, do you have any rap thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, there are um, there there are a couple of groups I listen to. Um, I'm a big fan of the guys who came out of Anticon. Um, so like Dose One, um, Adam Drucker, who does like a lot of uh, video game soundtrack stuff now. Actually, um, always been a big fan of his and the groups that he's been in. So his solo work, he's in a, a group called Themselves, um, and another one called Subtle. Uh, there's another ex Anticon alumni uh, named Y, and that is le- the word with a question mark. Um, although he like it, that's that's um, Yoni Wolf is his name. He he, he kind of skirts this weird sort of in between edge because sometimes he does like rap, but other times he plays the xylophone. Um, <clears throat> Restiform bodies. Um, is is another one that comes out of the Anticon because that's the passage. Is that guy's name? Um, oh yeah, Alpha uh, or or Atfa or I'm not sure how they pronounce. That's another Dose One group. That's um, that's Dose One and um, what's his name? It's Mestizo, I think, or something like that. Um, it's, so it's the band is A the digit seven P H A. Um, yeah, Mestizo. So, so that's Dose One and Mestizo. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, Dose One, I, Dose One might be my, I guess, I guess my favorite rapper. Um, I also like, uh, Leaf, uh, L-E-1-F. Uh, Leaf is, is, is a really good rapper. Um, very, like, gay, too. Like, super queer power rap. Like if you're if you're looking for because I know that's kind of thin on the ground, you know mm-hmm. uh, you you've got to like look really hard for for queer rap. Um, Leaf runs, I think a um, like a queer rap kind of collective, Camp and Street, I think it's called, um, with like some other um, some other uh, um, uh, queer rappers like Jungle Pussy. Um, Fuck, that's a good name. Yeah, I'm. I'm mm, Ooh, trying to remember who else. Run the jewels, of course. I shout out Killer Mike, of course. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, run the jewels, definitely. Um, those are the ones that that are hitting me like right off the top of my head. There's a couple of like older ones that I that I like as well. You know, like um, fucking. Oh God, like I can't even I can't even remember names. Um. Shit. I'm looking over the questions here, and I'm saying there's a wrestling one I'm going to give to Leon. But it also occurs to me that my limited knowledge means that I could have asked this question a hundred times already, and I wouldn't know it. <laughs> so that's a thought I All just right. had. Yeah, my my knowledge of hip hop is uh is limited. Mm-hmm. Um, I did listen to Poof Daddy the other day. Um, when I was exercising, cause I was, I was like scrolling through my, like my YouTube and I'm like, what song should I listen to? What rap music did I listen to when I was younger? And then I, I clicked on a song that I remembered and I did. And that is my rap experience of the past year. Uh, mm. sorry. I apologize for the whiteness <laughs> of this conversation. Also M- <laughs> MF doom buck 65. Sorry. <laughs> Buck sixty five was was the name that I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are Leon's thoughts on Zack Ryder wrestling? Ooh. Ooh. A question um, from Rick Gray Rick on Twitter. Okay, um, mm. basically for for people who don't know, uh, Zack Ryder is Ooh, uh, sorry he... Aesop Rock. That's no, another one. Okay. Um, Zack Ryder is, uh, he's a wrestler and he was in WWE for, uh, quite a while and he was like a lower tier sort of guy. And in order to try to stand out, he, uh, years back, he created a YouTube series about himself. Uh, and he would do like little comedy skits and little jokes about how the fact that he's not popular with the fans, but he wants to be, and people really loved it. 
And because of this, people started cheering for him, like, in the arenas. Like, he suddenly became very a very popular guy just because he decided that he could be popular. But the people who make these decisions hated that because they decide who should be popular, not the fans. And when the fans started cheering for him, they just buried him even further. Eventually, they gave in and gave him, like, a tiny little push towards not the top, but the middle and then they took it away very quickly. Um, my feeling about him, he seems like a really talented uh, and cool guy who deserves more. Um, I just, at, at some point, no one, if, if they don't pick you to be the guy, you're just not going to be. Um, very rarely, um, like in the, maybe in the case of like Daniel Bryan, um, are, are like, is, is fan reaction alone enough to completely sway the opinions of, you know, management? Um, I feel like, like sadly, I feel like you should. Lean it doesn't, into I know that, that doesn't though. make sense. I know that doesn't make sense, and it's counterintuitive. But that literally has how it has always happened. I mean, it's an ego thing with the psychopaths who run wrestling. But I've actually was talking to sure. uh, Chris Larios, who I work with on my other show, Dice Funk, and he was telling me about Daniel Bryan, mm-hmm. which is like they yeah. they turned the sh- the the company's disdain for him into like a storyline that he got to overcome, which was like a th- yeah. cool thing. Like, I feel like if, if someone you don't want to become, that's the one exception. Yeah. If someone you don't want to become popular becomes popular, just like use that momentum. I guess that's like cynical, but like just profit off of that, I guess is like the thing they yeah. should do instead of trying to bury him to be just egotistical dicks. Like, no, I want it my way. Yeah. But it took, it took years for them to eventually figure out that, yes, we should actually do this. Um, it, it was not something that they just decided, well, okay, he, he's the one exception. It was more like it wore on mm-hmm. them eventually. And eventually they gave him the top spot, sort of. And he doesn't wrestle anymore. He had um, a, a, a concussion and he was sort of rushed into a retirement that he didn't feel he needed to. Um, but WWE decided he had to because they have wellness policies. Um, he apparently has been cleared to wrestle by doctors who do not work for WWE, but because WWE is a big publicly shared company, they're not willing to let him do it anymore. So he's going to ride out the rest of his contract and wrestle elsewhere. Um, right now he, he's like, he has a non, um, he, he has like an on camera role, but he doesn't like do anything. He's like, he talks, he doesn't, um, you know, bump, um, so, yeah, anyway, yeah, this was all sad. Um, my feelings on Zack Ryder are like, yeah, he's good, but they're, never, they're probably never going to do anything significant with him. And who knows about Daniel Bryan except Daniel Bryan and his doctors. Yeah. Um, looking through the questions here, we got a couple about um, EA and the Battlefront 2 situation, which we alluded to with the loot crates. And actually also just talking about Visceral being closed by EA and Dead Space and stuff. Like, EA has been incredibly... Uh, talked about the last week or so i think they have the most downvoted comment in reddit history yes because of this. they do um but yeah so uh matthew uh, matthew v Hare asks with apologies to leon thoughts on the loot box apocalypse like we've talked a little bit about this kind of stuff before do we have any new thoughts because now everyone's talking about it they've caught up johnny i you know like i keep every single time Okay, every single time something gets just like a little bit worse for the consumer and a little bit worse for the consumer and a little bit worse for the consumer. I keep thinking to myself, okay, this is going to be it. This is this is where it hits its zenith. This is going to be the point in time where video game enthusiasts or whatever you want to call yourselves um, finally have had enough and they don't buy the game. And every single time that doesn't happen. So, you know, until I actually see people people objecting to the fact that they are constantly, like, allowing a company to dig its hands further and further and further into their wallets, until I actually see that objection, uh, I, like, I don't, I don't think that that anything's going to come of it. I know that I know that right now, you know, there's a there's a, a a citizens watchdog group and a petition in the United Kingdom that's trying to have the government look at loot loot boxes as a form of gambling. And um Belgium too, apparently a Belgian review board has just decided that they're going to look at um particularly Battlefront 2 and Overwatch to see whether or not they they constitute as an actual form of gambling. And Honestly, I I think I would support this. I think I would. Um, 
because I just I I don't think it's it's particularly ethical to to dangle this particularly in front of kids. I mean, you you know, say what you will about like you know an adult. If you've got a job and you've got money, okay, fine. Maybe it's no big deal if you decide you want to throw a couple of bucks away at the video game. But like, people who have gambling addictions problems would would not do well in that situation. What bothers me is convincing children that this kind of con like consumer vendor relationship is okay. I I do not want young kids growing up thinking that. That it's all right to just put like five dollars into the slot machine, pull the lever, and be like, "Well, I didn't get anything this time, so I guess I'll try again." I think that's that shit might have sailed already. I like I hear people talking all the time about how kids like coming up with video games are confused when like console games don't have microtransactions. Like, yeah, we that we might have already lost a generation to that kind of conditioning. I like just, it, it, but it, that doesn't that doesn't mean we should give up on it. You know, like it doesn't mean I, that I, I think that we should just be like, oh, okay, well, it is what it is right now. Technology has this really, you know, we were talking earlier about about the ethics of of you know, like the the algorithm, and it's yeah. like the concept of can you, should you. I don't think anybody has literally stopped at any of these companies and thought, Wait, should we be doing this? I mean, you know, the, the people who make those decisions aren't the same people who make the games, right? Like, if you go no. into the video game yeah. industry to make games, you probably want to make the best game you can. If you go into the video game industry to make money, then you put loot boxes in your games. I, I mean, I, I recognize that, but, like, there still should be. Somebody should be stopping and saying, should we be doing this? Yeah. Or, like, is this is this right? Because, obviously, the laws haven't caught up to them yet. You know, and I like I here's the thing. I don't have I don't have much of a problem when it comes to cosmetic. Like, I think as far as I'm concerned, Overwatch is OK because there's it, it's only cosmetic. Right. I have complicated but, feelings about that. But go on. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If I, that's... I have I what I mean is I have I have less complicated feelings about it. OK. But when you were actually like when you were actually interacting with with someone's ability to to contend and play in the game and have fun in the game. Because nobody has fucking fun when they plug into a multiplayer shooter and they just keep getting destroyed constantly by people who have better equipment and, like, better heroes and better this and better that and shit like that. And I know that's not how the, these economies run because you've got plenty of people who don't spend money, but maybe they have all day to, like, you know, buy things and level up. And I I have – I don't like multiplayer shooters. I just want to put that out there. I'm, I'm, I'm done with them. I'm sick and tired of the culture, and I'm just sick and tired of, of what they have turned into these days. But I think it's absolutely ridiculous that you're going to go into a game, some guy is going to, like, just f fucking put your teeth on the curb and step on the back of your neck, and then it's going to show you what equipment that he did it with and be like, man, don't you wish you had some of this? Ooh. Oh, it'd be so easy if you just gave us five dollars. I'm I I do not like that. I very deliberately do not like that because that that injects money directly into the situation of how much fun you're having in the game. Yeah, that that monetizes your loss. It just literally recreates like systems of inequality in our escapist entertainment which yeah. is very philip k dick frankly <laughs> yes yeah. um yeah i could do I, we could do the whole episode on this i mean there's people like jim sterling whose like entire career is basically just talking about this every day of the week for, <laughs> which is like how deep this conversation can go but all i want to say is that this whole episode i've been talking a lot about how uh you know money and suffering are intertwined and there if if we can't make any progress on obvious things with material ju verifiable suffering consequences the idea that we could somehow muster the political will to crack down on what seems to be a purely financial transactions and what are viewed as like frivolities like no matter how bad loot boxes get i just don't see any of the old crusty fucks in our legislature actually doing anything about it. I'm sorry if that sounds cynical, but like they don't know what video games are, no. let alone that what they should do about them. So but I the think moment, the only the power we have moment, is to not buy Battlefront 2. <laughs> the moment that they realize that they're losing out on tax dollars, though. Mm. Right? 
And they already is... are. All video game companies uh, have elaborate tax shelters. They don't pay taxes. EA doesn't oh, pay no, taxes. Oh, no, I, I mean, Activision I, I recognize doesn't pay that, taxes. but it's... Like, the money the money on fucking, like, microtransactions and shit like that, there are going to be a lot of socialist, like, base governments or governments with socialized uh, tendencies that are going to be like, holy shit, this is a lot of money that we could put into our healthcare, you know, our education systems or something like that. And once you start messing around in a world concept that you're only allowed to gamble in Battlefront 2 in America, <clears throat> companies are going to start thinking twice about about that money, because there's there's no way that that I mean you know all the noise they're making about the increased costs of video game development now are going to be able to say okay well then I guess in this long list of countries here we're gonna have to make it 18 years and older in order to have loot boxes. Yeah. That's nobody is gonna fucking do that. I could have I could imagine nobody. a different world where this kind of thing could be used responsibly. <laughs> Like this, this it's almost a shame that there's no room for some of this design space. But it is the nature of profit-seeking behavior to take everything to its most grotesque extreme as soon as yeah. possible, which is exactly yeah. what happened. Which happened and then, with and, that DLC. And then the law and... is going to push back at some point in time. The law is going to push back, and then some of this like uh, creative pricing, creative thinking, or whatever you have, you a lot of free-to-play games are probably going to fucking disappear. Hmm. It's hard to say. I, I'm bad at making predictions on these things because I have mm. trouble getting into the mindset of the kind of people who would pay for loot boxes, and they I don't understand them right now, let alone their future behavior. All you all you need to think about, Austin, is people who just have trouble reining their impulses in. Hmm. That's like that's I, your shortcut. Right? That's your shorthand right there. I get the feeling like, around this cheesecake. This is not someone who's like, I'm going to spend $5 and like see what I get. Oh, well, that was disappointing. Never mind. <clears throat> Unless someone like deliberately does it as an experiment. I did once. I, I deliberately spent money on a mobile game, and I was like, that was a waste. Uh-huh. Because you, like, you never get there, right? Yeah. Th or if you, like, if you do, then you like, don't have any more incentive I'm to play the game. Done. Like if I like I play Fire Emblem Heroes, right? And if I paid yeah. money to get the heroes I wanted, I would stop. I'd be that's it. There's no more game. The game for me is trying to get them. Yeah. So like paying like almost defeats the game. I don't know. We're boring Leon, and this is like a huge enormous topic. But the 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 basic thing is we're fucked as long as people keep paying for it. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, we're fucked as long as people keep buying these games. As well, because you're saying, well, you know, it's okay that it's in the game. I'm just not going to do it. Like, it's no – company, no company takes a hint until you actually hit them with their wallet. And, and then they take a hint pretty hard. I mean, look, look, look at Electronic Arts and Mass Effect. You know? Like, and they didn't, they didn't look at Andromeda and go, well, gee, we'll just have to try harder next time. They looked at Andromeda and said, "Ah, fuck! It's done." Well, yeah, it didn't monetize in the way they want. Which, speaking of, uh, R.I.P. Respawn Entertainment recently purchased by Electronic Arts. Yeah, uh, I'm not looking forward to your closure notice in about four years' time. Yeah, so preemptive condolences for the failure of Titanfall Three and all the layoffs. Yeah. Anyway, next question: We gotta get Leon back in the mix before the show oh, ends, mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. You know, it was a really good game. Yeah. Super Mario Sunshine. I can't tell if you're being serious. I never played it. No, I'm, yeah, I am. I thought it was good. I think it's, it. it's the that weakest my... 3D Mario, but it's okay. it's compared to most 3D platformers, it's good. I liked it. I'm glad. It, you, it, I'm it, was glad. Just like Mar it was just like Mario 64, but wetter. Also with kind of worst level design, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> Pretty uh, yeah, it is very pretty. I think what's funny is that it's kind of a contentious topic. Like, there are people who really, really hate Sunshine and people who really, really love it. And recently, uh, Giant Bomb has been playing through it. And they're, like, a really big site. So they're getting a lot of eyes on it. It's kind of revitalizing that conversation. And it's mm -hmm. interesting to watch as people who had strong opinions are forced to actually play the game again and confront them. Um, oh, okay. I, I was like just trying to make an innocuous comment that was like a non sequitur about everything yeah. you were actually talking about, but sure, I mean, we can talk about that. We um, neat. Uh, well, that's Super cool. Mario Odyssey's out, and it's supposed to be the best game ever made, so it's oh. timely. Oh, anyway, right. we have time for like one more question. I got to get Leon back in here. So Nick Isaacson asks 
Favorite yeah. movie with a wrestler as the star? Oh, God. <laughs> was that the oh god of now i have to think or uh, no just like there i mean all right let me think of wrestlers well i guess they live yeah they live i mean that's that's that that's i mean that's a good one. it's not one of my favorite yeah, yeah it's not my, one of my favorite movies but like of the movies where a wrestler was the star there's basically movies that starred hulk hogan or movies that starred um the rock uh the rock um, I, I like, I, I, you know, he's been in some, some movies, sure, but I can't really think of too many where I was like, I sure do love that rock movie. Southland Tales. Um, uh, yeah, uh, but is he the star? Nah, he was definitely he's the really biggest the star. I mean, he's, it's he's, more of an he's sort of piece. the protagonist in a way, but just sort of like only kind of. Yeah, he, he's, he's, um, it's, it, it's an ensemble movie much in the same way that like the Fast and the Furious movies have become that yeah. where there's no real yeah. main star and he's in those as well, but I'm not sure if that's, that's, that's true to the question. Um, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, bro- we can broaden it a little bit because that also like would disqualify, uh, Batista for Guardians of the Galaxy, which I think is a yeah. pretty strong front runner for this question. If you think, oh, well, he's, he's not really the star, it's an ensemble, but I feel like I, it's within the spirit because he's, he's one of the heroes. Mm. One of the, that movie's just okay. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Hot so. takes. Super Mario yeah. Sun, Sunshine rules. Guardians of the Galaxy sucks. Leon Thomas. I didn't think it sucks. I said it. I said it was just okay. It, it, mm-hmm. It's fine. It's a Mar- it's a Marvel movie. It's fine. Um, they they are they are all kind of like that. Um, this one's a little better than than most, definitely. Like, but eh. Um, I wouldn't want to watch it again. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, ditto for the sequel. Um, uh, I mean, if you, if, if you expand the question to like any movie that a, someone who has been in wrestling has ever been also in that movie, the, it's huge because like wrestlers have, are, are like in small roles in movies. Like, like John, John Wick had wrestlers in it. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin I mean, they're Nash. they're entertainers, right? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So I, so I, so if we can expand that, the real answer to this question is Magic Mike Double XL because Kevin Nash is in it. Mm, you tried. It was close, but actually, it's uh, Andre the Giant in Princess Bride. Sorry. Ooh, thanks that for is a good thanks one. for playing, Leon. It's definitely <laughs> a good one. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's good movies that have wrestlers in them. There aren't a great many movies that have wrestlers as the main character. No, because then they try to turn it into like a weird personality vehicle. There's a bunch of yeah. shitty like John Cena kills people with guns mm. movies, but like who gives a fuck? Yeah, John Cena is the, apparently the star of the new Bumblebee movie that's coming out, so we'll see uh, how that goes. Um, or we just won't. We don't have to watch it. <laughs> I, mean, oh, yeah. I know. Mm. I know this is not a popular opinion, especially with Leon, but I really liked Pain and Gain. Okay. I didn't uh, see it. I didn't see it, so I, I, I have no opinion on it. Oh, I thought you... I remember we had some kind of Michael Bay conversation where you thought it was like a disgusting idea to make a movie out of that. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I like that movie, and The mm-hmm. Rock is one of the main characters in that. Okay. I, hmm. I, I do not remember that conversation at all, but it, okay. Maybe it was just some other very smart, uh, handsome fellow. Predator! Yeah, There's, Definitely. Fuck, that's also Ooh, very good. Ah, uh, yeah, he is in that. Um, Jesse the Body Ventura. Um, shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, but yeah, like, yeah, there's lots of movies where like wrestlers have supporting roles. Um, they they do that. Uh, I think they're mostly yeah. getting they're actually getting better at acting though, because a lot of times it's like we just need a big scary guy to do the, yeah to do for the punch. But now it's right. like Batista's taking acting classes. Like The Rock has yeah. just like so much fucking charisma that like i feel like i get like wrenched out of my seat every time i see him on screen (laughs) it's like they're actually good actors now right escape from new york has the ox baker in it and he was a uh he was a professional wrestler and they just needed a big guy for um snake plissken to like bean with a baseball bat and it's like okay him and that was it oh oh you know what no spider-man bone saw is ready yeah he was ready. ready. Yeah. So that's the, <laughs> uh, that's the message for the week. Fuck Bon Jovi and Bonesaw is ready. He is. Um, yeah. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Sorry, this was Leon. fun. This is a fun conversation. Um, anything you guys want to say before we go? No. <laughs> <laughs>